الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين. So brothers and sisters, uh, today we start a new chapter and it's somewhat relevant to the previous chapter. Uh, we read several hadith, several narrations concerning Raja, which we talked about was the anticipation for the mercy and the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi starts a chapter here and he titles it Fadlur Raja, which means the virtues of anticipation, anticipating Allah's mercy. So, the, what is the relevance and what is the distinction to have and separate the chapters? As the scholars of hadith explain that in the previous chapter they were general narrations speaking about how it is uh, uh, part of faith, it is part of our iman to have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be desirous for that. In this chapter, the uh, author, Imam Nawi rahmatullah alayhi, uh, lists several narrations and one verse that specify the virtue or the rewards, the virtue or the rewards that are related to having this type of hope and uh, anticipation of Allah's mercy. So the uh, verse of the Holy Quran is from Surah Al-Ghafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ikhbaran an anil abdi salih. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about a pious servant. The commentators of the Quran say that this pious servant was rajulum min ali fir'aun, was a man from the uh, household or the clan of fir'aun, of the pharaoh. And we know that it's a lengthy story, but one part of that great uh, story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was instructed to give the message to the tyrant ruler of the time, the Pharaoh, the Fir'aun, uh, then at one particular junction, a man who was from amongst the ministers and amongst the close fellowship of Fir'aun came in the presence, in the courtyard, in the ministry, and uh, declared that, uh, you know, if Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is at truth, then we're at loss. And if he is not truthful, then there would be, uh, there would be no uh, you know, negative issue if we let him be. You know, if he is at truth, then there is loss for us. And if he is not truthful, if Musa والسلام, is not truthful, then let him be. Why cause a commotion and why cause this negative circumstance for him? Uh, as we know, uh, Imam Muslim also says this, that when something is false, you just simply don't discuss it. Don't talk about it and it automatically disappears. But when something is truth, then no matter how much you try to hide it, it will come forth. It will be illuminated. It's like light. The scholars say it's like light. You turn on the light or you light a candle in a dark room and it illuminates the room. So, truth is something that will definitely prevail and it will definitely be made clear. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of Surah Al-Ghafir speaks about this pious servant. Who is this pious servant? It's the member of the Al of Fir'aun. It was a man who stood in the presence of the courtyard of Pharaoh of Fir'aun and said that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam should be left alone. So amongst the statements that he made, this pious person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records one of his statements. وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I fully hand over my affair. I fully hand over my matters. إِلَى اللَّهِ to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ For indeed Allah is ever watchful upon His servants. Allah is ever watchful upon His servants. So after he made his statement, he said from this point onwards I'm giving my matter in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've done what I could. I went in the presence of Pharaoh, I explained to him, now after doing my part, I leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the verse continues and Allah says, فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secured this individual from the evils or the harms that they were plotting. So whatever harm or whatever they were planning to uh, cause a negative circumstance in the situation for the believers, for Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, 
and for people like him who had accepted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secured him from that. So the crux of this verse and the relevance to this chapter is the virtue of Raja. This man had the bravery, as the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, one of the forms of jihad is to say the truthful statement in front of a tyrant ruler. To, cha to say a just statement, a statement that is just, it's adil, it's, it's truth. To say it in front of a person who may be a tyrant. So he stood up and he was brave enough to speak about the truth, to speak about justice. And the fear that was there about his life, the fear that was there about possibly him being put into prison, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when he did this with hope and anticipation of Allah's mercy, and he did it for the right reasons, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ وَقَا يَقِيَ means to save, to secure. So Allah saved uh, this individual from the many harms that they were plotting. مَا مَكَرُوا now, uh, the narrations that uh, Imam Nawi lists here, there are about three narrations. So the first narration is on the strength of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. He says that on one occasion the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quoted a statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's Hadith al-Qudsi. And as we have mentioned many times, that Hadith al-Qudsi is a revelation that comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it in his own words. And the difference is that when it's the Qur'an, then it's the exact words that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. So in, in this hadith al-Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي bi." I deal with my servant in accordance to his perception about me. I deal with my servant in accordance to his perception with me. So if we think positive about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we anticipate His mercy and, and we have this firm belief that Allah will change things, Allah will make things better, Allah will grant mercy, Allah will forgive, then that is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do because our faith is linked with Him. But if we feel that you know Allah is going to punish me, Allah won't show His mercy upon me and we have a negative feeling with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a sign of our weakness of our faith. Uh, we know when the Sahaba, when the Prophet ﷺ, when the pious, whenever they stood before the greatest of challenges, they said, Allah is with us. And when they understood this, and they, it wasn't simply lip service, it was rather coming from the heart, then they saw the mercy, they saw the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what it means here, and this is the reason why uh, the, the author has listed this narration. The narration, narration continues, and it's a famous narration, we've heard it many times. The Prophet ﷺ says that Allah says that I deal with my servant in accordance to how he has his perception with me. وَأَنَا مَعَهُ حَيْثُ يَذْكُرُنِي And I will always be along with him whenever he remembers me. So whenever we have the awareness, then Allah's special mercy is with us. Allah is always there. And Allah's mercy is always with us. But his special mercy will be with the servant who is constantly aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi lallahu afrahu bi tawbati abdihi min ahadikum yajidu dalatahu bil falat. The Prophet then says, Allah, he takes the oath, he says, By Allah, Allah is so pleased with the repentance of his servant from any of you, just like if any of you had lost his valuable property in a uh, open field, in a desert, in an open field, and then all of a sudden finds it. What happiness do we get? When we've, something valuable, we've lost it. And we're, we're worried, where is it? You know, I, I can't seem to find it. It's been days, and, and we're really sad about it. And then when we find it, there's my valuable cell phone that I, you know, saved up for so long and finally purchased it, and I lost it, and now I found it. So we feel satisfaction. I've, uh, you know, I, I feel relieved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Afrah, and those of us who know a little Arabic, Afrah is the emphasis form. It's the mubalagha, it's the emphasis, it's afdal. Meaning that Allah is more happier than the servant who finds his valuable lost property. Allah becomes more at joy and happiness at the tawbah, at the forgiveness, at the seeking of forgiveness from his servant, 
than how you and I would be so happy when we find our lost property. وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا And whosoever comes near to me, Allah says, to a hand span, تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا Then I come towards him, a yard span. وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَاعًا Whoever draws near to me, meaning in my obedience, etc., a, a yard span, تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا I extend my mercy to him at an even greater uh, uh, length and, and, and speed. وَإِذَا أَقْبَلَ إِلَيَّ يَمْشِي أَقْبَلْتُ إِلَيْهِ هَرْوَلْ And when the servant of mine draws near to me by walking, أَقْبَلْتُ Then I come forward with my mercy as if I am hastening. So even though this is a physical description, but the scholars agree that this refers to the majesty and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we draw near to Him in the slightest, okay, we do one small good deed. Okay, Allah's mercy rushes towards us. Allah's uh, special bounty rushes towards us. So we should never underestimate any, any good deed. And we should never feel that this is not worthwhile. Or this good deed, this sacrifice, this good act of mine uh, is not worthwhile. We should always have the, the hope and the mercy and, and the anticipation and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will accept it. He will show His mercy. So we can see the great virtues of... Uh, having this uh, yaqeen and this uh, conviction in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how it benefits and uh, the, the outcomes are always positive when we have this sense of understanding and a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the next narration is on the strength of Jabir radiallahu anhu. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu says, he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once saying, قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ بِثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ And Jabir says, I can recall it's probably uh, three days uh, before he had passed away. Three days before the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the Prophet ﷺ said these words, لَا يَمُوتَنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُحْسِنُ الظَّنَّ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ None of you should die. None of you should die except in the state that they are in goodness, in relation to hope and desire, anticipation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in, in the, the, the narration is quite explicit, it's very clear that the Prophet ﷺ is saying that when we die, we should die with hope in Allah's mercy. That Allah will forgive us, Allah will grant us paradise, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show His mercy upon us. Now, in the commentary of this narration, it's mentioned that three days before the Prophet ﷺ passed away, in accordance to some narrations, it was two days, etc. The Prophet ﷺ noticed that the companions were in a sense of grief that the Prophet ﷺ is passing away. So the Prophet ﷺ walked into the masjid even though he was unable to lead the prayer. He was unable to uh, uh, walk by the support of the few companions. He came in the masjid and he, he sat uh, at the place where he would generally lead the prayer. And he instructed Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to lead the prayer. And after he led this prayer, according to some narrations, this was the Dhuhr prayer. The Prophet ﷺ got onto the member and then he gave some powerful advices. So this statement is amongst those powerful advices that he gave before he passed away. And the likes of Jabir radiallahu anhu and many other companions, when they heard that advice, they understood that the Prophet ﷺ now will, will be passing away because majority of the advices he gave at that particular junction it was relevant to death and it was relevant to having hope in Allah's mercy. So even though they, they knew, they were certain that the Prophet ﷺ was passing away, the Prophet ﷺ left them on a good note. The Prophet ﷺ left them with hope that even though I may not be present, I've left a legacy with you. I've left a teaching with you. I've left the manual of the Qur'an and my teachings with you. And if you stay firmly upon that, then you will be never misguided. You will never be abandoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His mercy and this legacy is with us. So part of that legacy is that we always have that hope in, 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 in Allah's mercy and we are always positive in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, none of you should die except that they have good hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last narration in this uh, chapter is on the strength of Anas radiallahu anhu. He says, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, again in a hadith al-Qudsi, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared, Ya ibn Adam, 
O children of Adam, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ Whenever you call upon me and you have hope in me, whenever you call upon me and whenever you have hope in me, غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ مِنْكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي I am prepared to forgive you no matter how great the sin may be or the negligence may be from your behalf, on your behalf. وَلَا أُبَالِي And Allah says, that I will not consider it as a favor. I will not consider it as a favor. Ya ibn Adam, O children of Adam, لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكَ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ If your sin happens to reach the pinnacles of the sky, ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي And then you shed a tear seeking forgiveness. غَفَرْتُ لَكْ Allah says, I am prepared to forgive you. Ya ibn Adam, O children of Adam, إِنَّكَ لَوْ أَتَيْتَنِي بِقُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَا If you come to me in the state that you have filled the earth with evil, you have filled the earth with evil and sin, ثُمَّ لَقِيْتَنِي لَا تُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا And you come to me in the state that you have not transgressed the bounds of Tawheed, meaning that you have not associated a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَأَتَيْتُكَ بِقُرَابِهَا مَغْفِرَةً I will come, I will deal with you in the state that equal amounts I will bring rewards and maghfirah for you. So we fill the earth with evil. Allah will grant us forgiveness and mercy. That's His capacity. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. Whenever we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we should reflect upon this. Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. They come from Rahim. And Generally, the, the, the translation we, we make is Allah is compassionate. Allah is merciful. It actually is derived from Rahim, which means the womb of the mother. And we know the relationship a mother has with the child. And specifically, when the child is in the womb, they have anticipation, they have hope, and uh, they, they're so attached to that child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, He's talking about His, His vast mercy. For some, that vast mercy, as we read in some of the previous narrations, it's limited to this world. And for others, it will continue in the hereafter, and that's exclusive for those people who have iman and who have faith. And as we can see from this narration also, that no matter how great the sin may be, if we are sincere in our tawbah, if we are sincere in our asking Allah's forgiveness, and particularly when we are passing such uh, valuable days and nights of Dhul Hijjah where Allah has expounded mercy as we talked about earlier uh, the Prophet ﷺ says that any good deed that is performed within these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah it's multiplied according to the narration that Imam Al-Bayhaqi has quoted 700 fold 700 fold so this is amongst Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy he's, he's, he's giving us opportunity after opportunity okay Occasion after occasion to draw near to Him, to His mercy, to His bounty. So if we don't take advantage of this, if we don't, uh, you know, move forward to hold on to that mercy and that guidance and that help that is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no one to blame but ourselves. So these are all opportunities and these are all occasions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. The bottom line is that we, we never lose hope in Allah's mercy. And as I have been saying since the beginning of these few chapters that are connected to Raja to anticipation of Allah's mercy, the hope that we need to have, it's connected with faith. Okay, if a person loses hope in Allah, okay, then they, they, they have damaged their faith. They have destroyed their faith. But when a person has that strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll have the hope. They'll have the anticipation. Uh, the next chapter, we won't begin it, but uh, basically it's, it's, it's talking about how we need to have Raja and Khawf. We need to have the mercy. And hope in Allah's mercy, but at the same time we also have to have some sort of fear. We can't simply say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoorur rahim, He's uh, forgiving and merciful, and then we do whatever we wish. Okay, it's not uh, a license to do sin, rather it's, it's, it's a means of drawing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And we can understand this from the various narrations we've read, in particular... Uh, one of the narrations that we came across where the Prophet ﷺ noticed that the companions, they, they, they started abandoning the, the city. And they started drawing near to the mountains, into the caves. So the Prophet ﷺ told them that if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you and create another nation that will commit sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. 
Meaning, the Prophet ﷺ, we have to understand in its context. The Prophet ﷺ saw that they were losing hope, they were in despair. And many times we see this in our time and age too, where the challenges are immense, whether we look at Islamophobia or the situation in terms of justice and, 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 and matters that are related to the Muslim Ummah, we feel a sense of despair. We feel that, you know, things are just getting worse and, and things are getting bad and what's going to happen to us, what's going to happen to our generations. But the reality of the matter is that if we have firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how great the challenges may be, our faith will enable us to never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. We'll be able to maneuver and navigate despite the challenges in a positive way with Allah's bounty and His mercy. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with His special mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to always revive this hope that we need to have. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in these noble and, and precious days of Dhul Hijjah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adhaab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tab'anina ya mawlana inna ka anta tawab rahim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa